That's cool. It's so weird. Is it? Oh, it's hilarious. The sexy anyway. zookeeper walking down the catwalk <laughs> to go feed the cats. Stop lions. <laughs> Like that, that would have been a cool combination because you know, when you're a zookeeper, you have to rock the car keys and you'd be oh, like, no, right. uh, ah, <laughs> ah, it'd be like one of those cool 80s movies where like somebody has to wear a uniform. But the, I'm thinking, like, um, don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. You know how she's like, she <laughs> wanted to reinvent uniforms and make them really hip and really cool. So people wanted to wear yeah. them, and then you could have done that for the zookeeping industry. That would have been amazing. Wild Roads. I'm Shana Lee. And I'm Paula Ivy. Join us for conversations about how we don't do stuff normal, how we choose the wild roads of life. We want to show you all that's fun and possible, building businesses, making money, navigating relationships and parenting, things we know out about, and running at our wildest dreams. All right, so Paula the Ivy. I'm Shana Lee. Okay. This is going to be cringy for me. I love this cringiness at the start of every episode. Like, I'm loving going back to stuff. Um, what was your go-to outfit that you wore to go or to out to parties that you at the time, but now you go, oh, no, I can't, I can't. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so I think being an, a, a teenager in the 90s, it's funny because a lot of the fashion now is like what was fashionable in the 90s. And I mean, mm. only a few years ago, I would look back at like my choices from the 90s and go, oh, but now you're like seeing like the high waisted mum jean situation back again. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, oh, I thought that was like left in the 90s. And the Fabergé, um, look. even though. Even though I didn't do the high waisted jeans situation, even in the 90s when it was cool, I used to wear the real low hipsters with the bell bottoms at the bottom. Yes, I did too. And I, yep. Yeah, I'd always wear my white, oh, were they vans? I don't know, sneakers. I'd always wear them with white sneakers, like white chunky sneakers. Then I'd wear usually like, a boob tube situation. I think back of that, and I look at photos from me in the past, but in saying that, I don't have a lot of photos of myself back then because I was always the one taking photos. So I have a lot of yeah. photos of my friends and that kind of reminds me of what I would wear. And like when I'd wear, like I was pretty much always in jeans. I hardly wear jeans now, but I used to always be in jeans, which is okay, not too cringe worthy. But I used to wear like a, you know, the um, the leather wrist bands <laughs> that made you look like you were like a rock like, star or something. Like the cuff, like the big yeah, the cuff. Yeah. <laughs> I used to wear the leather cuff, thinking that I was some like rock star. I had this favorite necklace of mine, and it was like a, you know, how chokers were really in back in yeah. the days. It yeah. was a choker, but it was made out of like the, is it the curry shells? Oh my God. But it was more my hairstyles I think I am cringeworthy with. I went through every colour with my hair of the sun. I was constantly going from brunette to black to blonde to like everything. And just the haircuts, like I, for some reason, I would get my hair cut with a fringe or a bang, or like have bangs, and then I'll go, this looks terrible, and then grow it out. And then once it was grown out, I'd be like, I know, I'm going to get a fringe again. And it would look terrible. And I look terrible with a fringe. And so a lot of my photos from back then, I would have either the straight across fringe, which looks oh, really wow. bad on me, like really bad, um, or like the one that goes to the side, like Ooh. a big sweeping fringe, like like yeah. you know, like this, but like cut into it. So or or I'd have the little. This was a hot favorite, you know. On either side, you'd have the little bits coming down, oh, and you'd nice. have just yeah. two like. I've got really thick hair, so like it looked ridiculous. <laughs> so you'd have like two thin strips of hair yeah. either side of your face, parted in the middle, <laughs> and then you'd have those bits cut just below your cheek bones, <laughs> so they'd just sit there, and then all the rest of my hair was long. And it looks ridiculous. I love it. I love it. It's so <laughs> cool, Robert said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that's the best. That's the best. It's terrible. And I always straightened my hair. I hated that my hair was curly. Mm. And I'd always straighten it. Like, it would always be dead straight. And I look at it now and I'm like, oh, Ugh. dead straight hair. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. It's so funny. And But, you know, you could wear that now and still look hot. Like, that's really cool stuff. I remember wearing that in my 20 even like, billabong court flares. Like oh, cords. I, cords. I have cords. Oh, loved them, loved them. And they're back now because I'm older than you, right? So my <laughs> go to. More A style. High school, high school, right? So early high school. Oh my gosh. Bubble gummers. Do you know them? Do you know what bubble gummers are? Denim? Nah. No. Bubble gummers are a type of jean, right? That are stretchy but they've got these big lines in them right so they're massive they're like a, i don't know 10 times corduroy but they they're stretched like a tights kind of thing but they're denim and they're called bubble gummers and they're just the oddest thing you've ever never seen but it was the thing to wear and you wore them with boots you wore them with like high cowgirl boots or um you know and and like crop tops that oh, you probably don't remember, but Fido or Fido, Fido was a character that was on all this fashion. At the time, it was like a crop top that you that I wore with them, um, white boots, bubble gummers, white crop top, long sleeve t shirt, thinking I was hot as man. And I was just like, I, oh, I'm so glad that hasn't come back around. <laughs> They will never come back around ever. That's my I opinion. remember bubble gummers. I do remember having like like jeggings. Oh yeah, yeah. They yeah. were like a, in they're the two like, thousands though. The jeggings. They were yeah. Horrible. They're like they're like bubble gums like that, but it's kind of like they didn't know how to finish the bottoms of the ankles properly, so they were like this little puckered flare thing at the bottom. <laughs> into your socks before you put your boots on it was so cringeworthy man oh if mum's got photos i'm ditching them <laughs> there's, there's the hot roxette hairstyle that i had at the same time so it was just like i had really short hair and i used to tease my like it was really short and i had this long fringe but i used to tease it up really like punky and then i used to like go out in the sun and put um, we had this stuff called sun spray thing. Oh, for your hair. Yeah. Sun in. It was called sun in. Yes. It was like a spray. And you spray it in your hair and it makes your hair go blonde, apparently. Right. It always made my hair go red. Oh, did it? Yeah. So I used to, like, spray every two hours and go back out. <laughs> At one time. <laughs> <point. laughs> so That's commitment. My hair was just, like, this stiff thing at the front here that was just white it was hilarious i love talking about this stuff bringing back the memory that's so funny i used to wear my favorite thing for a really 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 long time was rollers those shoes the black shoes yeah that had like the, the zigzag bottom on them oh uh, yeah i used to wear them with um this was when i was younger though when i was in primary school i used to wear them with like um black tights like black um leggings oh they're called yoga pants now back in the day they were leggings because nobody <laughs> yeah. did yoga. um so yeah i used to wear them with like black leggings and then i would wear like really big scrunch down socks in really bright colors like oh yeah, yeah. that cool. was just remember, like thinking back to then, like what our dreams used to be, getting on topic yeah. now, like yeah. what our dreams used to be and how they changed as we grew and evolved. And my dream was to be a model slash zookeeper, like you know. Oh, oh I like that combination. <laughs> That's cool. It's so weird, is it? Oh, it's hilarious. The sexy anyway. zookeeper walking down the catwalk <laughs> to go feed the cats. Stop lions. Like that that would have been a cool combination. Because you know, when you're a zookeeper, you have to rock the car keys and you'd be oh, like, no, right? the, oh. oh, it'd be like one of those cool eighties movies where like somebody has to wear a uniform, but the I'm thinking like um 
don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. You know how she's like, <laughs> she wanted to reinvent uniforms and make them really hip and really cool so people wanted to wear yeah. them. And if you could have done that for the zookeeping industry, that would have been amazing. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then feed the animals, put them, to, put them to bed and go out to the nightclubs, dress and your yeah, Marlboro smokes and your gin and tonics. And that's what I grew up with supermodels knowing that's what they did. It's just like, okay, I'm in the... I want to do that. <laughs> totally. Oh, Kate Moss was definitely one of my idols when I was a teenager. Oh, yeah. Sure. Same. When I was younger, there was a, like, I had a few big dreams. First, I wanted to be a singer and I wanted to be a superstar singer. Then everybody kept telling me that I couldn't sing. I'm terrible at singing. But I'm sure that if I had gotten singing lessons as a kid, I'd yeah. probably be a lot better by now. But everybody's like, no, Paula, that's no, no, no. There's no natural talent in that department whatsoever. <laughs> but then I really got into, I really wanted to actually be a film director. Ooh, that's what wow. I wanted to be for a really, really long time. I actually mentioned it in, I've just done the live, a live round of video vibing and I was talking about like when I watch movies and, you know, kind of, deconstructing wild like scenes and what are the elements that I can bring into my own visual storytelling and things like that. And I was like, yeah. the way that I was describing it, somebody said something and I went, oh, I actually wanted to be a movie director when I was a kid, like being the one that gets to direct the storytelling and like the way that things roll in the movie and all that sort of stuff. That was a big dream of mine. But then at the same time, I was always very much as a kid, I never saw myself as a leader. I could be somebody who would tell a lot of people what to do in that situation. So yeah. it was like this a dream that I had, but a dream that I was like, yeah, but I'm way too scared to go after that because if you're the director, you're the one everybody listens to. It was yeah. so weird. Like I had the, the desire to be that person, but at the same time I had this equal fear of like being the person that people Isn't had to that listen to this sort of thing. Because a lot of it, a lot for a lot of us, the big dreams, the holding us back is that you know you aren't worthy of dreams, or mm. that's just not going to happen to you because of luck, or this is the, it doesn't happen in our family, or you're too big for your own boots, kind of thing. That oh, the, the world doesn't evolve around you. And then there's that this other perspective, like you said, once you get there, there's so much responsibility with it. Mm. Mm. So your big dreams, right? I wanted to ask you, like you for us and the people that um may have just stumbled upon us you know we both have our own brands we both are online um and and having some successful business online you know followed our dreams we have our mentors we're in master classes we actually teach we um facilitate our own trainings and we coach and it's just the amazing you know our dreams have come to this point in time and we are always evolving and always experiencing new things. But I wanted to ask you, you with dreams that you've had along the way that you are no longer aligned with, do you feel a responsibility to follow through on and try and catch that dream? Are you really, like, are you okay to let it go? Because I find it, does, it depends on the dream that I'm having, but... Um, just like, yeah, now I don't mind who sees that I'm ditching that, I'm just moving on. Or do you feel a responsibility that you got to follow through? Yeah, well, I love this question. Because that's the thing, when you put yourself in an environment where, you know, you're putting yourself in front of people and saying mm -hmm. and declaring things like, this is what I want to do, this is where I see myself going, um, this is what I stand for now, this is, you know, what I'm creating right now. Because the thing is, for me, one of my top values is expansion, like growth and evolution. And, and for me, it's like the reason why I, I started my personal brand and shifted from being a photography business into being a personal brand is because I wanted that freedom of like being able to grow and evolve. But then as that happens, mm -hmm. what you are going for can shift and change too because the way that I see it and I talk a lot, a lot about like your wildest dreams and, and going after your wildest dreams and making the big wild moves and all of those sorts of things and it's a big part of what I help my clients go through as well well actually grow through it is like what do you want what's the what's the big vision that you see like what do you see in your wildest dreams and let's start going after that 
But the thing is, like when you start to move towards that, you've got all these other dreams that happen along the way. Like you've got like you've got the big wild dream, right? And then as you move along, you've got like all these milestones and goals and, and dreams that happen along the way. And I fully believe that each time you go after something that your soul is calling for, that you feel that desire for, and you see it as something that you get to do, because I, I truly believe that you would not be, it wouldn't be possible for you to be able to envision you doing something if it wasn't possible for you. Absolutely. So the way that I see it is like every time you go, you move towards something, the path reveals itself as you go. Like you don't know how to get from here all the way to where you see yourself in the future and where life is so different from where it is now. Because if you knew the way, you'd already be there by now. Like exactly you wouldn't right. have any fear around it. You're like, yeah, I know how to get there. It's cool. I just drive down this road and then I turn right and then I'm there, right? But when we go after something that's so different from what we have right now and that we're, you know, longing for the change in this and that and all of the things, because usually in our wildest dreams, it looks so different from where we are now. That's why it's a really wild dream because you're like, isn't that wild? It's so different from right now. Not saying that right now is not good, like, I love my life right now. I think it's amazing. But at the same time, I still see so much potential. It comes through me. Like, I can see us mm. doing these big, wild, beautiful things. So for that to happen, you, you go on this journey with it. And it's a lot about just letting go and allowing the journey to take you on the path that it needs to take you in order for you to get there. Because everything that happens along the way, all the little dreams, all like the mishaps or the detours or all the stuff that pops up that you're like, oh, this is not what mm. I planned for. Like it's all part of the journey because everything yeah. is for you. Everything is here to teach you, to help you grow, to flex your muscles in certain areas so that when you do get to that big wild dream, you're capable of receiving it. You're capable of experiencing it to its full like power and magic because if you didn't go through all of those things in the way that you needed to get go through them to get there, when you got there, you wouldn't be able to hold it and it would fizzle out because you're like, oh, I just couldn't, I couldn't hold on to that. Or you sabotage it in some way because when you got there, it was just too big. It was too overwhelming for you to actually experience the thing. Or it doesn't feel as though what you thought it was going to feel like. And then, you know, you end up thinking that it was a waste of time and it wasn't what you were after anyway because nothing changed along the way. Like you didn't grow into the person yeah. to get to it, love and appreciate it when you get there. So I think that's one of the things is when people talk about creating businesses to get the lifestyle rather yeah. than this is what I teach and what I preach and what I live is like live the lifestyle and you create the business along the way. Exactly. because the business gets to grow and evolve with you otherwise you build this business that's supposed to fund this life and then when you get there it's like it doesn't feel like it should because you built something that's supporting something that you haven't even experienced yet and then that's when a lot of people feel trapped and stuff because they're like oh now i've got to like this i built this thing to get here but now i feel like i need to keep this business which i don't really like because i'm here now and I'm not really enjoying here now because I'm doing work that I don't really enjoy. And I hustled <laughs> to get here and I didn't actually follow my intuition. I didn't follow my soul with it. I just built it the way that I thought that I should build it. For me, letting go of dreams along the way or shifting course. Yeah. At first I thought that, you know, it made me look flaky. Yeah. I've actually been like that my whole life. I did a human design reading with Michelle Wong, who's amazing. And yes. one of the things that she said about my design is that, like, if you don't, it, like, if you get to a point with something and you don't enjoy it, move on to the next thing. Don't see things through mm -hmm. that you don't, are no longer, you know, feeling aligned to or that you feel passionate about because that drains your energy quicker than anything else. So yeah. for me, my I know my energy is currency. Like, people pay to be in my courses and my programs and my mentorships because of my energy and because of the way that my energy connects with their energy and makes them feel. So I see my energy as very important and part of my currency. So if I start to feel like something 
isn't quite working for me anymore or I don't feel aligned to it anymore, then I ask myself, like, what do I want here? Like, where do I go? What's the next right step? And I always know. As a kid, it was always like, Polly, you never follow things through. You never complete things. You give up before you've even, like, gotten to the end. And I'm like, it's not giving up. It's just I didn't feel like I wanted to finish that. Like, that didn't feel good to me anymore, so I swapped. And as a kid, you don't have any, like, guilt about that. You're just like, no, I'm just doing what's fun. Um, but right. as an adult, it's like you're responsible, you've got to see things through, you said you were going to finish it and now you're not. I think there's a difference between delivering things that, you know, people have paid you for and like oh, yeah. things that, you know, next steps in your business, for example. Yeah. Like you could say you're going down one path and start working towards it, but then if that doesn't feel good anymore and you're like, ah, I actually want to just like delete all of that, and start it from here like those are the bold moves that actually create big shifts within your business and big growth because you're you've you've gone down a path and like as you go down that path there might be instances or things that have happened that sort of pushed you to a certain certain way and then before you know you look up and you go oh hang on this doesn't feel right anymore oh wait I want to be over here and it's okay to do that and I totally support that when that happens there needs to be a distinction you've got to check in with yourself to see yep. if it's no longer aligned and you're moving in the wrong direction like you're moving in a direction like further away from what you're actually wanting but you're just going in that direction because you've got momentum in that direction and yeah. you feel like you can't really stop. I have a little person, if you hear noise in the background, ask yourself, like, does it not feel good in this moment because it's no longer aligned or because you just don't feel like it right now? Oh, I'm not going to do that anymore because it doesn't feel good. But I always check in. I'm like, what is the big wild dream for me here? Is doing this going to serve that and get me closer to that? Yes. Okay, so... I'm going to suck it up and do the thing anyway because this I know is going to get me closer to what I'm actually desiring. It's just that this part I'm feeling some resistance or procrastination around because mm -hmm. I'm doing my soul's work and that happens a lot. It doesn't feel yeah. comfortable doing it. You've got to step outside of the comfort zone. It's like when you're comfort zoning, it feels good to do things. It feels safe. It feels yeah. like easy. But when you're doing things that are outside of the comfort zone, then it, it can sometimes be like I'm not doing it because it doesn't feel good just because it's uncomfortable as opposed to it's not aligned anymore. Absolutely. So I think that there's some things that you've got to check in with yourself about, but I totally and 100% think that it's okay to not see something through if it doesn't feel aligned anymore. I agree. And those things, those things that we're questioning there, those things that you're mentioning is, are the things that can, uh, that can hinder you getting to your dream or, you know, or it's going to help you get to your dream but yes. I think it really is what's happening inside like you know and I know I was one of those mums that other mums probably thought you know she's flipping oh, she's doing the wrong thing by her children and mm. I'll give an example this was with Harry my boy and he was playing basketball and I got him into team sport he tried everything he tried you know Oz kick he's tried basketball he tried all these things, I tried to get him into team sport because, you know, that's the thing to, you know, to strengthen their muscles and their, and be a part of a team and, and yeah. learn those skills, you know, that sort of thing. But he so never much. loved it, you know. He never wanted to do it and it was his dream was to be a pilot and that's a very solo thing, right. He's just he's yeah. to be a pilot. Has always been, even, you know, just as, um, you know, a three-year-old, that's all he wanted to do. Anyway, so... To follow his dreams, I was like, he'd come to me and he'd say, "Mum, I'm in a he's in his basketball team," and he's like, "I don't want to play tonight," and it just kept going on like that. Well, you got to, you know, you you probably should go because you're going to let the team down if you don't go tonight if they haven't got a sub year and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, the on the car ride to the basketball, it was just he was miserable. He was so miserable. You know, the mums of the team. I'm like, Harry's finishing. This is his last week. He's not doing it anymore because he said to me. He said, Mum, it's just I don't feel happy. It doesn't make me happy. Why do I have to do it? It doesn't make me happy. I'm like, yeah. you, know, you know what, dude? You are so right. It doesn't you have make to. me happy. You don't have to do it. And it wasn't even a goal. It wasn't even a thing to get to a dream of his. Yeah. It, was just something, it was just something that we thought that he needed to have as a life skill. 
but it, but your 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 navigation, your your inner compass takes you towards all the things that you need as a life skill, and then your dreams are a beautiful expansion of that, and where your soul 100%. wants to go to. And it could begin with a dream because it inspires you, but if it's only lasting a little while, and it's in only a moment in your time, and it's just like you feel like you have that um, responsibility to follow it through because you've announced it. Who can yeah. announce it? You don't have the responsibility to anybody but yourself. So I just feel like letting go of dreams that once were and you didn't, they didn't come to fruition is fine. It's just like it's opening up to a way bigger dream for you. Ah, uh, totally. And also dreams for me shift and change as I approach them as well. Yeah. So one, like, what I first see is possible for me and I connect to like that big vision. Like at the moment it's to travel again. Like we did the lap in 2019, 20, early 2020 of Australia in a caravan yeah. and I want to do that again. But then at the same time, I see us doing it in a way where we've got, cause the first, first time we did the lap, we did it in like a half caravan, half camper, situation that didn't have a toilet didn't only had an outdoor shower that was more like a hose <laughs> um and i'm like i uh, i see us doing it in like a proper caravan where there's yeah. minimal set up it's high end and it's like it's got a bathroom and it's beautifully designed and all of those things because a lot of the cheaper caravans like they're not beautifully designed they're yeah. like still stuck in the 80s but yeah. like that's yeah. what I see for us the next lap around. And mm. so for me, it's like, okay, well, that means that we're going to have to sell the caravan, the camper that we've got now, and we're going to buy a new one and all of those things. And I'm just acting as if like each day I just take the next step that is being shown to me. And it could be like the next steps are the things that you feel aligned to do along the way. Like, it's not like, oh, today I'm going to look up caravans and like put out yeah. on the market yeah. and buy, like that's the logical way of doing it. And yeah. like that can work, but I know that that will come when it's time. Like it's not time to do that right now. The next inspired action that I got recently was to, to start the selfography club. And I was like, okay, let's start the selfography club. Like that was something that I could create in my business. And I know that that's going to be a massive support for the yeah. people that are in it, but also for, for me and where I'm wanting to go and how I'm wanting my business to look next time we travel. Because I did have a membership last time we traveled and I did have courses that I ran and, and so many different things. But now it's kind of like I can see the next level of what I can do work-wise why we live that lifestyle again and i wasn't able to see that the first time around like i had to experience doing the lap first i didn't do it the best that i you know now now think about doing it i'm like oh we could have done this and we could have done that but i didn't know i had to go through it and experience it before i could see the next level of it so every time i have a big wild beautiful dream i know it's not the end goal i know that once i've done that it's the stepping stone to the next one and the next yeah. one like that for me is what life is all about is achieving these things so that you get to the next one you get to the next one so many people look at it as like end goals once i get there i'm going to be happy and i'm going to yeah. have money and i'm going to just sit yeah. back and relax and life's going to yes. be beautiful i'm like that's not yeah. living to me. No. Living to me is doing the things and going after the things and going, great, I've done this, what's next? Great. I've done, and going exactly. on the roller coaster to get there because I feel so alive when that happens. Anyone that's listening to this and, that's, and not watching that's on YouTube. That's my son. Um, we, Paula is the most professional person right now. She's just like everything's just coming out of her soul, but she has this little monkey on her back right now that's just like, <laughs> grabbing onto mum and then falling back on the bed like, you know, he's an acrobat. Wow. She's so cool. He's so it's bad. probably annoying to listen to and I apologise for that. But, <laughs> like, you know what, bang. hashtag mum life and bang. <laughs> we can take the we wild roads with that. children. We can do that. You're stuck in the pillows. How are you going to get it out? <laughs> Don't know. There you go. This is the beautiful part of it all is that we need to remember that Life isn't just about the big dreams and 
grabbing them like there's so many little incremental steps but they're yeah. little dreams along the way and when we celebrate them the the realization that your bigger dream can come true come true is a little bit more profound because all those little dreams are coming true we've caught it yeah coming true. next next yeah. next you know if we don't celebrate that if we don't even acknowledge those little dreams coming true then it just feels like our big ones are just that always out of reach and that's when the ego comes in or when the conditioning of you're not good enough or yeah. you know all that stuff that that creeps in and that's louder than yeah. when you're celebrating the little dreams that uh, that have come to fruition those noises inside those those voices they they're very diluted when you, oh, you start yeah. celebrating but I, I see them as the point like for me the way that i see it is like the biggest wildest dream that you can see yourself doing so like us traveling around australia and doing the big lap of australia that was a big a big wild dream of mine for so many years yes. and then it finally yeah. happened and when i was actually doing it i'd have these moments of like oh my god we're actually doing it and, and <laughs> yeah. the time i was like of course we're doing it like i've seen myself do this a million times in my mind before it feels like this is actually supposed to be happening right now it. so it's it's amazing but the the point was to go through all of the things that we went through before we left actually doing the thing was just kind of like the cherry on top like yeah, the thanks. whole cake was like the journey too and experiencing those little wins you can't get out uh -oh. Um, and experiencing all of those little wins along the way, all yeah. of those, like, you know, smaller dreams, which I think are just as important and such and just as yeah. big and just as wild as, like, the big wild dream you see yourself. But the thing is, that big wild dream that you're like, best case scenario, best dream life ever, I see me doing this, being this, in this place, all of the things, right? that is actually what helps pull me forward like that connecting to that and going yes that's what i'm going after then my intuition can tell me what the next right step is because i keep connecting back to that so if yep. anything that is like the anchor or like the thing that like pulls you in like if it's like you know um how you've got like a pulley on a rope or whatever and you're pulling it in pulling it in, yeah. pulling it in. like that's what helps keep you connected to that so every time you you take one of those um you know you grab the rope and you pull it towards you you know when to do that you know how to do that because that's your intuition telling you your next step to get there and the whole point is having an epic journey along the way one that you can like that's why so many people are like you wouldn't read about what happened for me to get here like you would never believe that's when people go with soul with intuition and they don't yes. force it and they don't try and logically think about the next step after the next step they just go on the wild ride and they're like and before i knew it, i was here and I, like, I was like how did it even like what even just happened I, yeah like quite often when you're on the right path you feel like you're not even heading anywhere towards it like That's it true. feels like you're just like going yeah like this and then all of a sudden you're there Wailing. yeah i know it's so i love crazy. it yeah you experience all of the feels like expect to feel joy happiness celebration but also sadness grief pain hurt yeah. all yeah. of the things along the way you feel yeah. all of it it comes back to like your perspective and your trust that this is for yeah. you and there's something here even though it might suck bowls right now that there yeah. is something in it for you that <laughs> he's, he's just jumping all over me um and breaking my concentration so i'm going to leave it there and throw it over yeah. to you, Sean. <laughs> uh i just think that it's just the beautifulness yeah. of it all and i think the journey and then just being human and we do get to experience the emotions and we do get to do this you know it's just like putting things in perspective and i think gratitude is a massive thing that comes with dreams gratitude of what we do get to experience along the way and you know i think it's take the pressure off of the exact dream down to the line of what oh, has yeah. to happen Take the pressure it's off so that much more when you get there than what you could have ever imagined. If you try and control it and it to be exactly what you think it should be, then you could get there and it's not going to have as much magic. It's not going to feel either. like it, you imagined it would. I don't plan anymore. It sounds weird. No, I don't plan. 
I I feel like you know Plan Bs, Plan Cs. Do we do we have them? Is just kind of like uh, for me, I go with the flow. But I mean, obviously, I'm projecting where I want to go, and I'm I'm searching, and I'm taking the roads and the wild road, and I'm I'm doing all the things. I'm pivoting and I'm turning, but I don't have the pressure there of it has to be either yeah. Plan A or Plan B at the, end of the journey. Because yeah. that it's kind of like I don't think it ever happens. I it, I don't mm. think it ever it comes to fruition when where you think it is from the very get go. Like it's going to happen exactly as you planned it. Yeah. I, it's I think I think yeah I think it's kind of like it, there needs to be an open heart here to to go with how it's meant to happen, how it's going to happen, and and what it will look like is you'll find what it looks like when you get there. Yeah. It's like wild things can't be tamed. So no, if you want no. your wildest dreams to be your wildest dreams, you cannot tame them. You cannot, like, beat them into Daddy. submission. <laughs> yes. Okay. I've got to build a pillow fort right now around my child. I think another another podcast it would be really cool to talk about, like, how we do this but with in relationship, like marriages, partnership, with children as well because yeah. that's another thing yeah. that we get to explore with this is like we have our wildest dreams they also have their wildest dreams and how do you make all of that work together Absolutely. so that we all get to experience what it is that we see because that's a whole that's a whole like whoa it's huge that's big that's huge yeah and i can see why you know there's a lot of marriages that and partnerships that could break up because of different different oh. dreams dreams not being fulfilled and all of those things been there done that got the oh sean we're gonna have a conversation about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah we so are <laughs> Bodie, i'm recording a podcast he's like what <laughs> Well, now he's quiet after we're done. <laughs> <laughs>